Hey everybody, Stu Sheldon, AG6AG. This is not an amateur radio how-to video. Uh, this is more along the lines of a IT video. I wanted to get this out. It's a presentation that I did about a year ago, and there's been a big uptick in phishing emails out there, so I figured I'd get this information out there. It is kind of an intro to how to detect uh, phishing emails and how to work with them. So I hope you enjoy it. I tossed it up pretty fast. So if I've got a bunch of oops and ahs in there, I apologize. Anyway, on with the show. Hi, everybody. Stu Sheldon, AG6AG. I want to share some thoughts about phishing emails today. If you have an email account, chances are you've been hit with phishing emails. Now, this is something I run into in my quote-unquote day job as a network engineer and a network security specialist. I also manage many email servers as well. So this is a problem that I deal with daily. The biggest issue that we have is education. So hopefully what everybody's going to get out of this little presentation is a better grip on how to actually catch phishing email before you're affected by them. Now, I want to talk about some crazy numbers here. This information was from a Canada research uh, company, I believe in 2017. Uh, the numbers are old, uh, so these are actually low now. Uh, 156 million phishing emails every day? Wow! How about 16 million of those actually making it through spam filters? Now, as an engineer, that doesn't surprise me because spam filters just can't figure out all the tricks that humans are playing to try to get that email to you. Out of those, half of them, believe it or not, are accidentally opened by the person they're addressed to. 10% of those have the links clicked that are inside of them. That person has actually clicked on a link that fools them to go someplace, whether it be uh, a link to put a password in or whatever. You never know what it is, but I have to tell you, it is a potential for a problem. 10% of those are 80,000 people a day end up falling for the scam, giving up either personal data or actually losing money on the deal. Those numbers are crazy. So hopefully, I'll be able to help you in not having that happen. Let's talk about a little bit of history. Phishing versus spam. What is spam? I mean, we all complain about it. Spam is actually email that's just sent to convince you to purchase products or services from somebody. Uh, mostly legitimately generated. Now, mostly, uh, I say, because a lot of times there'll be a company that has uh, purchased your email or whatever from a reputable partner and is trying to get you uh, introduced to whatever they're selling. And they may have a product you might like. Now, is it annoying? Well, yeah, so is junk mail that comes in the uh, mailbox out front of the house. But it is just a part of email that we have to learn to live with. Phishing, on the other hand, is email that's sent specifically to deceive you into giving up personal or private information that can be sold or used in criminal activity. Um, in other words, they can sell your email. They may be using it to verify your email. Uh, it's also commonly used to install remote control software to take over your PC. Maybe, maybe it's there to read and copy all the information you're putting in the keyboard. We call them key capture programs. You log into stuff every day with secure passwords. So that can be a super problem. So there's different types of phishing. Just like phishing in the real world, you might be trolling, which is sending the same email to millions of addresses in the hope that someone will bite. Um, but there's a very interesting type of phishing email that we call spear phishing, and it's only come up in the last four or five years. And it's specifically targeted at an individual using information gathered from intelligence to trick that person into acting in a desired way. Uh, how do they do it? Well, there's several different ways. 
We'll go into that. But let's talk actually with the problem of, of email itself because that's how we got here. No conclusive method of confirming the sender. There's no way that you can look at an email and ever confirm that it's going from someone or coming from someone that you know, unless you use something like PHP to sign the email before you send it, and that way they can verify it against a key. But that's a long involved subject for another talk. Forging emails uh, is so simple that even an amateur radio operator could do it. Ha, 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 ha. You could do it, too. It's very simple. It's just an issue of forging headers. That's easy to do. The to header, the from header, the subject, the reply to, all those you get to set. That's not done by anything other than you. And that actually comes down to the problem of it being a core design of email. So almost it's almost impossible to fix. There's no way to change it because it would break all email. And of course, the use of free and public emails like Gmail, Yahoo, Hotmail, all that stuff has just made things worse for the person that's trying to protect themselves and easier for the criminal element to work. Now that all being said... This look familiar? Can I trust you, my friend? My dear beloved friend, greetings. Please let this not sound strange to you because I am not asking for money. Wow, that's hard to read. For my only surviving lawyer. What? My only surviving lawyer? I mean, come on. Now, if someone came up to you on the street and started telling you this story... Okay, would you believe it? Uh, no, not at all. Okay, but let's talk a little bit about some things that we, uh, we can tell right off the bat. Okay, well, first thing is, of course, if we look at this, we see that it's not going to any recipient, right? Undeclosed recipient. So it's gone to probably tons of people. Um, the from address and the reply to address are different. And the reply to address is basically from a Gmail or a free email account. Uh, and uh, this other address is a domain in Japan. Hey, maybe you might want to give this person a try. Who knows? Not me. This one gets a little better, okay? This is more targeted. This one actually goes to an email address, okay? Uh, not only does it go to an email address, but it's got uh, it's it actually looks like something that someone might be sending you. But now let's go and look at some of the things that we're going to look at. Let's let's start by looking uh, looking at the from line. Well, the from line is that actually a d uh, a p d m is that actually a d p no, no, it's not. It looks sort of like ADP. It certainly isn't. Um, and we can dig down a little bit deeper. It's also telling us it's important that we don't reply because it's an unattended mailbox. And chances are it's not even a existing mailbox, right? Uh, but let's take a look at a little bit more. I mean, this is getting good. How about this link? Where does the link go? Well, if I hover over it, what I'm going to see is I'm going to see that the link actually goes to realestateschools.academy. Um, wow. So why would they want me to click on this? There's the question. Well, a couple different reasons. Think about it. The most basic and simple reason is they can have you click on this, and they've got a code here right at the end that tells it, what email this is. It knows the email address it was sent to. So when you click on this link, just by clicking on the link, they have verified your email address. Now, why, why is that important? Well, they can make money now off that email address. Great example. Um, let's say you have uh, a bunch of email addresses that you find, but they're not validated. Well, there might be worth a tenth of a cent maybe, each, but validated emails could be worth up to five cents a piece. 
So it's worthwhile for them to try to get you to validate this address. Secondly, hey, maybe they're uh, going to go ahead and try to uh, get you to log in and give up your username and password to the actual ADP payroll service. That's a possibility as well. And they can make this page look like ADP and get you to enter all sorts of information on the backside. So always, always look at this stuff. Always look at the from line, okay? See who it's from. Uh, APDM.com has nothing to do with ADP, all right? Immediately, that should send up red flags. Never, ever, ever trust any email that you get, even if you get emails like that all the time. You know, we can even dig a little deeper, okay? We can look at the source of the mail. Now, these are the actual email headers. If you've ever had a engineer or an email manager tell you to... Uh, send them the headers of the email. This is the section of the email they're looking for right here. Tells all sorts of magical information to us. And the big one is where it was received. Uh, this was actually received from a uh, little roadrunner.com uh, internet address out on the internet someplace. Uh, and that thing's just sitting there generating spam. All right. I can take a look at the from line, right? Who they are claiming to be from. I can look at the reply line if they're trying to mess with us on how they're going back with that. Uh, I can, oh, I can even, I can even look at information that's in the email that might be hidden or obscured in the email by using HTML or other code. So, again. If you're still not convinced that it's fraudulent, look at the header. And if you don't know how to do it in your email client, ask for instructions from your email administrator. Now, this one, this one almost got me. I, I, I found this one really interesting, right? Because um, this one looks pretty good. It's got the Netflix logo. It wants to verify my account all this other stuff, and it's trying to get me to log in, right? Because guess what? It's threatening me with cancellation. So, But let's look at this. Ah, okay. So I looked at the from address, from address verified. Well, at the time, it could have possibly served.com was one of the many uh, providers for Netflix at the time. Uh, but I don't know. That can be forged. That that can be anything that anybody wants. I can send you an email and make it look like it's from the president. I can send you an email and make it look like it's from your boss or from your uh, from a really good friend. I, there's all sorts of things that I can do. All right, and the bad guys, if I can do it, the bad guys can do it too. I, I'm not that big a genius. So the link actually goes to NetflixServe.com. Go to. Okay, so here's the problem. It kind of looks like a Netflix URL, but you know what? It wasn't. This isn't Netflix. This was actually a phishing email. And again, we look at the header, and we can see origination, where it came from. It actually came off a user system um, in... Uh, at uh, Microsoft, and when we looked up the serve.com, it actually came back to Korea. So, hey, good thing we didn't answer it, huh? All right, well, send lawyers guns and money. I love this one. This one's great. Personal connections, right? Help, I'm in Mexico and I lost my wallet and all my credit cards and money. Please wire me $1,000 to this exchange and I'll pay you back when I get home. Okay, right? Anybody ever gotten one of these? Seriously. Did you wire some money away? A lot of people do. A lot of people fall for this, okay? Never, ever, ever trust an email from anyone about spending money. Find another way to find out what's going on. Don't answer it. Don't mess with it. Don't do anything with it. Okay? Or business connections. This one happens all the time. We've had a couple companies that have been nailed by this. 
Sandy, it's Gene. I need you to do a quick bank transfer uh, transfer to Bill for fifteen thousand uh, to get that pet project going. Info below. We'll fill you in on the details later. All right. Now, me personally, uh, you know, I don't. Uh, even if Gene asked me to do that, and I was Sandy, I wouldn't do it without talking to him and let him yell at me. But this is no way for them to ask you to do business. If your boss sends you stuff like this, boy, have a conversation with him because there's no way you're ever, or her, because there's no way you're ever going to verify this. It's impossible. So what do we do from there? Well, source of connection info. So we want to turn around and figure out how they're getting the information. A company or organizational website, that's a great one. You've got a page that lists all your email addresses and your titles. Guess what? I can look at that page and I can figure if I send email to these four or five people and make it look like it's from the big honcho or the boss up at the top, hey, I might be able to get them to do something stupid. I don't even have to really make much up. I can come up with something that may be along the lines of what they do. Right? So, uh, again, if you're the boss, you shouldn't send emails to tell people to do stuff like that. Okay? There should be a conversation of some sort. You should have some method that you can say, hey, this is really me, and you know because here's my secret word. Okay? Or, uh, you know, reference something that they're not going to be able to pick up easily. But remember also that if that email ever gets compromised for whatever reason, then they'll have that secret word. So you really need to think about how you're going to convey this information. Uh, and email isn't always the best way. Social media. You know, I can hunt you on Facebook and find out all sorts of great things about you. Uh, compromised address books. I can't tell you how many times a Gmail account, a Yahoo account, a Hotmail account, even a corporate email account can get compromised on their web service and they have their entire email address book. These are great addresses and they can look through, if they've compromised the email, they can look through previous emails to see what kind of conversations you have and make moves on that. Okay. Um, again, public records. Oh my God, I can I can search uh, corporations to find out who the principals are, who the board members are. I can do background checks now online. That simple. And believe it or not, trash cans, you know, bad guys still dumpster dive. So that can really be an issue. So how do I stay safe? Well, verify emails using the methods that we have discussed, okay? The from line. Double, triple check it. The, um, uh, but remember, the from line could be garbage, complete garbage. Um, make sure it's got a to address, right? It's not just to everybody under the sun. Make sure that everything really makes sense. I mean, uh, with that uh, email from supposedly that person who uh, last uh, living lawyer or whatever they were saying, was absolutely terrible grammar but it was perfectly spelled. There wasn't a misspelled word in the mess, right? That should be a direct tip-off, all right? Um, never use a link or a phone number given to you via email, okay? If uh, you get an email from the credit card company saying, call us right now, there's been fraud, okay? Here's our 800 number. No, 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 no. Take the credit card out, look on the back of the credit card, and use the 800 number on the back of the credit card and call them that way. They will be glad to direct you to any fraud department if there's anything legitimate about the email. Same thing with banks, same thing with anything. Okay, Never trust data in an email. Always remember, email is insecure. Do not trust it on its own. Get if you can get secondary validation, certainly get secondary validation before you spend any money or sign a contract or do something like that. Don't get caught in the mess. And of course, never send financial or personal information via email. It is insecure. Uh, it can be transmitted in the clear. 
once you send that email, you lose complete control over who gets to see it and everything else, okay? Companies may forward your email to six or seven different people. So you, you don't ever want to put a credit card number in email or an account number in email or anything like that. Uh, that is really a problem, okay? And remember, you need to be right about these emails 100% of the time. You cannot ever do anything wrong with email. Well, guess what? The bad guy only needs to be right one time. So, hey, it's all against you. <clears throat> so, be safe. Try to use the email in a safe way. And make sure that you don't get burnt. Thanks so much. Well, that's it. Anyway, I hope you got something out of it. And uh, if you have questions, make a comment down below. 73 from AG6AG.